What's going on YouTube? Zwift have a new series of workouts for 2023 called the Zwift Spring Training Workout Collection. Here it is. I'm going to go through every single workout in this video, give my thoughts, let you know if I think it's any good or not, worth a try. If I don't, I'll let you know how I think it could be improved and give them a rating out of five. Let's have a look at the first one here. It's called Aerobic Rev Up. Now I've set this to my FTP, which is around 370. Flex, I'm just kidding. So it's focused on aerobic conditioning, getting your aerobic system revved up for some harder training sessions ahead. Cool, so total of 20 minutes of work, split into two by 10. What are we working with here? So I've got it set to my FTP just to help me uh, get a feel for the workout better. We're gonna start off with eight minutes warm up into three minutes low zone two, and then two minutes at 280. First thing I'm gonna say about most of the Zwift workouts is that in my opinion, they they use too much of a warm up before going into the session. This session in total is only 40 minutes long. So in a 40 minute workout, generally what you're gonna be doing is trying to cram the most amount of work into that 40 minutes, in which case doing uh, eight, 11, 13 minutes of warm up is in my opinion, a bit of a waste in terms of cramming TSS. A warm up generally for something like this where it's zone three, a little bit into zone four, is six minutes. Do six minutes at zone two, a few 30 second bursts in zone four, two or three of them, and you'll be good to go. So we could get this warm up from 13 minutes, cut it in half, make that six and straight into this, to the blocks. Now they have said this is an easy workout, but you can see this is piss easy. So a minute threshold, four minutes at tempo, a minute at threshold, two minutes at sweet spot. That is nothing. Then what have we got? Five minutes in between. I mean, even for a pure beginner, this is more I would consider. I wouldn't even put this as, I wouldn't consider this a workout really. I would really consider this openers. You're touching the zones. You're not really spending long enough time in there to accumulate enough training stress where you're going to get a really good adaptation from it. So that's where I considered openers. Where like if you do a session like this, you'll most likely perform better the next day because these are just touching the zone. So is anyone going to be getting an actual workout training stimulus from this? 40 minutes, 40 TSS, not really. Even, even a pure beginner. So I'm not even really going to analyze this anymore because to me, this isn't even really a workout. Um, you know, I can't, I'm struggling to even figure out where I would put this into someone's training plan because it's not even, it's not even really a training session. Again, this is more openers. If I had someone doing an, maybe someone was doing FTP test on a Wednesday, I might give them this on a Tuesday to, 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 to open the system up for, for the next day. So I'll leave this one here. I'll give this one a, basically a zero out of five. I can't really give it any points because it's not doing anything. So let's move on. Next workout is FTP boosters. 38 minutes long. So again, it's short. Uh, so they're saying this session is all about increasing FTP by maintaining an F, a sub FTP baseline intensity with brief surges up and over at VO2 capacity, a popular and testing workout. Okay, so theory on this one sounds good. So, but they are saying this is specifically designed to increase your FTP. That's the first thing to consider. What do we got here? Eight minute warm up. I like that. Shorter warm up. Points for that. Then what are we getting to? So a minute 45 at upper sweet spot, sort of, nearly mid zone four. And then 15 seconds at VO2 max, upper VO2 max. Nice. Minute 45, 15 second surge. Minute 45, 15 second surge. Okay, I like this. So total set time, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten minutes. So two 10 minute sets with these sub threshold effort with surges. What do I think of this? Good. Good. What am I looking at here? Just so you can kind of follow along the train of thought. Okay, anytime a workout says increasing your FTP, I'm looking at time in zone. So two 10 minute sets. Is that enough time in zone? between zone four and five to get a stimulus for maybe the bottom. No, when I mean bottom, I mean just purely in terms of numbers. That's not like talking down. I th the, you know, the bottom 20% of people on Zwift in terms of training load may see enough stimulus from a workout like this. 
I'm looking at this workout going in terms of time in zone, you're going to want for, for an FTP stimulus, so working in zone four, minimum 25 minutes total across a session. That's minimum. Most riders are going to need 30, 40 minutes in zone four to make that a stimulating workout. So doing these two by 10 sets. Now these surges do help a bit, but not really, not that much. Even for a VO2 max workout, you're still looking at minimum 15, 16 minutes, you know, in, and that's in zone five. You've only barely touching zone five in this workout. So I would recommend if, you, if you're doing this workout, try three sets. I think it should be achievable to do the three by 10 of these sets. If you're an advanced rider, you're probably looking at to increase FTP, four of these. I mean, if you want to be really crazy, five. You could probably do five of these at this intensity. Most people, and the majority of riders, I would say are not going to see enough stimulus just from doing two sets. I know Zwift have to make these workouts for a range of riders, so I understand, but this is really only the bottom, I would say probably 20% that this is going to be stimulating enough for. What do I rate this? I actually like the... This is a good session. I like this. I'm probably just going to say... I mean, 15 seconds as well, maybe a bit short. Anyway, <laughs> uh, star rating of this out of five, I'm probably going to give it, give it a two out of five. Points because I like the actual efforts. I just don't think there's enough of them. So two out of five. Next one, we've got the Hairpin Wizard. Again, fairly short, 44 minutes total time. They say steady tempo efforts are great, but by incorporating 30-second high-intensity efforts into them, you will improve your body's ability to work aerobically for longer periods of time. This helps the body adapt to the natural surges in climbing around hairpin corners. Okay, first off, I, I do like when workouts bring in a, a visualization element. As silly as that sounds, I'm, I I like that. When you're doing a workout and you're then visualizing what part of riding you're going to be doing, I think that's not to be dismissed. So I do like that description. So it's two 16-minute tempo efforts and a 30-second surge every 3.5 minutes. Let's look at it. Warm-up time, eight minutes warm-up, two minutes or 10-minute total warm-up. That's not too, too bad. And then we've got this ramp-up, 30-second ramp-up into a ramp-up in tempo. And then a surge, and then that, so it's 16 minutes. Okay, so overall, this is quite similar in shape to the FTP booster workout we just looked at, but the sets are longer, so you're getting two by 16 minutes. And even though they're at tempo, you've still got a 30-second surge that's getting up into zone five there. So in here, it's, it's ending up at 444 watts. So I actually think, even though it says this is a, more of a tempo style session, as a whole, I think this is going to be more stimulating than the previous workout, so I like that. Again, you could probably do three, maybe four of these sets, so a four by 16 tempo surges, I like that. The other thing with this workout to start to consider, now these are spring workouts. For those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, so if you're in the US or Europe, the road season's already started. So if you're using these Rift workouts to get you in shape for your for your road season, and then you're doing this workout to help you prepare, let's say, for a climb that you have coming up in a race. This stimulus, I would like to start seeing done at the end of a ride. So this previous one here, FTP booster, specifically to raise raw FTP, it's fine doing these fresh. I would like to see how are you getting through these two 16-minute efforts at the end of an hour at zone two or at the end of two hours in zone two. And even by, you know, by the, come May, the season's already in some places in the US has already been running for two months. You're well into the season, into the road races. So you should be able to do these sorts of sessions in the third hour, in the fourth hour of a ride. So if you're someone who's looking at this and you like the look of the session, but you want to actually make this translatable to your road racing, stick on two hours at zone two, 65% of FTP, then load this workout up and give it a go. And that's going to give you a much stronger training stimulus that you're probably going to want by by the time spring comes around, you're in season. You know, it's really winters, especially now, we know how people are training. They're coming into the season hot. So if you want to come in really good in April, May, June, doing this is going to be doing nothing fresh. I would be sticking one, two, even three hours before this. 
than getting stuck in. This one overall, I'll give it three out of five. I do like it more than the FTP booster workout here. I think it's getting more time in, in zone. Next one here, 47 minutes over, under, and beyond to the moon. Over, under intervals help build top end capacity quickly. This type of workout is efficient and highly effective. Adding a couple of accurates, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so help you during a breakaway. Let's have a look. 10 minute warm up, two minute ramp. Okay, so you're coming. This is a proper warm up they're doing here. So this is like we're coming in hot to the first interval. We want to have, we want you to have good legs in that first interval. So they're doing the normal 10 minute ramp into zone three and then a two minute ramp up into zone four as a proper warm up. And then we've got 40 seconds upper zone four, one minute sweet spot, lower sweet spot, uh, 40 seconds, one minute, 40 seconds, one minute. So what's that? About five minutes efforts. And then they build throughout the session. Interesting that the intervals are getting harder in the second half of the session. So at the start, it's 390, 325, then 400, 335, 405, 335, 405, 340. What I would recommend for this, given that it's only 47 minutes, if you're trying to maximize the fatigue of this session and the aerobic stimulus of this session, I would do the hardest sets first from a physiological point of view that is harder. So I would flip this around, do this set first, then move to this, then move to this, and then the last one when you're already fatigued, then move to this. That is going to leave you with, on average over the entire session, a higher heart rate, higher oxygen uptake, and a more, even though, the, so the funny thing is the TSS for the session will be exactly the same. The aerobic stimulus will be stronger if you do the harder work first. Given that you can try to condense this down to a 47 workout, I would do that swap. That is for a physiological point of view. From a psychological point of view, this is the better way to do it. It's much easier to finish with your harder effort and kind of work your way into the session. But from a physiological point of view, if you really want to be a hard man, I'd flip this around, do it the other way. You'll get much more of a training stimulus from that. Overall, this one, I like. I like it. This looks pretty hard. I um, This is up four. Four out of five, I think. Four out of five. If they had swapped this around and had them descending, I'd be giving this... A five out of five for what it is. I think it ticks the mark. Next workout, VO2 Blast. Sheesh. Push it to the limit. These two-minute VO2 max intervals will help increase the maximum amount of oxygen your body can use. Okay, it's just a description of VO2 max. Let's leave that. Let's, what do we got? 10-minute warm-up, three minutes low zone two, and then we're getting into ramp. So two-minute ramp up into upper zone four. Okay, that, that's weird. So that's really easy that's two minutes this is a warm-up effort really two minute ramp and you're barely into zone five three minutes off two minute ramp to 406 again it's only two minutes that's not hard at all three minutes off ramping to 414 it's only two minutes two minutes for to 420 okay this is a dud I'm sorry. I like doing two minute efforts with three minutes recovery is okay. It's just not high enough. These need to be, you know, you're looking at in this, you're looking at upper zone five. If you're only doing two minute efforts, almost maybe even zone six. Like I'd be doing these at probably just, I know just from experience, I'm probably going to be doing these efforts at 470 to 490 watts, I would say. And I'm this, the hardest one's ending at 436. This is not going to be getting a VO2 max stimulus. So yeah, it's totally missed the mark in terms of that. Other, other thing as well, again, similar to the previous one, if you want to have more time operating at maximal oxygen consumption, I would swap these around, do the hardest one first, get that work rate up and then try and hold on as opposed to building into an effort that's not even that hard. This is a zero. This is a... This is sh shit work. This is terrible. Two minute efforts with three minutes on, I like. Uh, if I was doing this, turn erg mode off and just push hard and you'll get a really good training stimulus. But this is, yeah, these zones are just wrong. So that's a zero out of five for me. Big miss there. Next one. Final one, actually. Final send. Let's see. 
Uh, anaerobic intervals. Okay. To produce energy without oxygen. Uh, yeah, not really in this workout. Um, yes, if you're doing like a 30 second max effort and then having half an hour to recover. And a workout like this is still very aerobic. What do we got? 10 minute warm up and then some over unders. And then some more short. This, this is extended warm up here. And then what do we get into? The work sets. 30 seconds at 600 watts. Okay. <laughs> now we're talking. How long we got on? 30 seconds on, a minute off. 30 seconds on, a minute off. I have a workout exactly like this. I prescribe fairly often too. I like this. This is good. 30 on, a minute off. This is brutal. This is going to be really hard. What's the rest period in between 10 minutes? That's decent. Um, and then the same again. Only two sets. So I do think this will be stimulating enough for a beginner. Uh, let's say bottom half of the population on Zwift will probably get enough training stimulus from this. Um, when I'm prescribing this workout, I'm usually giving three sets on average. More advanced riders could handle even four sets of this with, with the 10 minutes recovery. So use this. I like this workout. Um, I'm giving this a five out of five. This is literally something I prescribe. So I can't really give it anything less than this. But... Again, we're looking at two things. Firstly, are you considering doing three or four sets of these? Should be considering that. And also, again, like if you're talking fitness for a road race, tack on two hours of zone two and then go into four sets of this. If you're a cat two, cat one. If you're a cat three, maybe do an hour and a half at zone two and then go into three sets of this. And that ends up being sort of a two and a half, maybe three hour total session that's going to be much more applicable to a road race. If you're coming into crit season, all you're doing is racing crits, yeah, don't do anything before this. Just literally rip into this and take Ergon off and send it as hard as you can. And yeah, you're fine leaving this as a 45-minute workout. But consider the application of what your target is to how you want to adjust these workouts. I think I'll end the video there, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something along the way and I'll catch you in the next one.